All right, what's up, guys, and welcome to Diabetes Talk. I'm your host, Charlie O'Connell. We are broadcasting live and direct from the Glucose Zone studio, and tonight's topic is diabetes and summertime. And we're going to give you some very, very practical tips for how to have success managing your diabetes during those summer months. And we're actually going to focus in on a couple things that are very, very important to understand. And the first thing is understanding the relationship between dehydration and high blood glucose levels. So in the summertime, generally speaking, it is easier to become dehydrated. We sweat more. Our body requires more water in general. Okay. And especially for people living with diabetes, we have to be aware of dehydration. And here's the reason why. When you become dehydrated and you have diabetes, the dehydration actually causes sugar molecules in your blood to concentrate more. And when you get higher concentrations of sugar molecules in your blood, that causes you actually to pee more. And when you pee more, you become even more dehydrated. So it's a very, very uh, dangerous kind of cycle that can occur. You start off dehydrated, your blood sugar levels go up, you have a a thicker, more concentrated uh, sugar molecules in your blood that causes your body's natural reaction to that is actually to pee out some of that sugar, which causes you to become even more dehydrated. So the first thing is make sure that you are drinking plenty of water in the summertime months is a very, very important, important tip for uh, having success living with diabetes in the summertime. Now, sticking on the theme of dehydration, there's another thing that dehydration does. When you are dehydrated, less blood flows through your kidneys, okay? And long-term dehydration can lead to kidney problems. So your kidneys, guys, very, very important to understand are very, very susceptible to high blood sugar levels, okay? And the reason why they're susceptible to high blood sugar levels is your kidneys are filled with microvascular blood vessels, little tiny blood vessels that are very, very susceptible to damage from elevated blood sugar levels, all right? If you're dehydrated, less blood is going to flow through your kidneys. The whole point of your guy, the, what's important to understand guys is the role of your kidneys. The role of your kidneys is like a, a flushing organ. It flushes out, cleans out and helps basically extract negative things that are circulating through your body, through your blood and excrete them. Okay. So your kidneys require a lot of blood flow. Okay. When you're dehydrated, less blood flows through your kidneys and that leads to kidney problems. So those are two things right off the bat, very, very important to understand as relates to diabetes in summertime. The effect that dehydration has, okay, the effect that dehydration has on your kidneys and encouraging you to drink some water. And on that note, I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs> Now, another thing very, very important to understand is um, liquids like alcohol, sugary drinks, diet sodas, things like that, they can actually cause you to be further dehydrated. Um, and that's a really kind of important thing to understand because if you're just uh, like really, there's so many reasons why you shouldn't drink diet soda, but in the case of summertime, if you are, you know, crushing two or three or four diet sodas a day, you're actually dehydrating yourself, dehydrating yourself. Okay. So hydration is the number one off the bat tip related to diabetes and summertime. Now, the second thing is avoid exercise, avoid heavy bouts of physical activity at the height of the day, okay? So if you're living with diabetes, you need to continue to exercise. You should be exercising every day. 
but what you want to do is exercise either in the morning or in the evening basically you want to avoid that time of day when it's the hottest possible when it's the most humid okay because that's when you become susceptible to all kinds of risks things like heat stroke things like low blood glucose things like high blood glucose the heat can play really really funny things on your body okay the heat can cause you to be dehydrated the heat also makes you more sensitive to insulin if you are injecting insulin so diabetes can be really really complicated and in that height of the heat day the best thing is basically a plan accordingly and make sure that you've gotten your exercise in either in the morning or in the evening now if that's not the case if for whatever reason you can't do that there's a couple things that you want to do the first thing is make sure you are prepared with plenty of water make sure that if you are outside your diabetes supplies are in a cool place what does that mean that means keeping your supplies in your pocket that means not leaving your supplies out in the sun that means having a carrying case that is not black colored so if you see my case right now and I want to say what's up to Instagram if you see my case my case is blue and that's actually for a reason guys because if your diabetes pack or case or carrying case is black black heats up really really quickly all right so if for whatever reason you did leave your supplies out in the sun okay those supplies can be susceptible to basically heat damage so that's kind of the second thing is if you're going to be doing what you're supposed to do which is exercising you want to be doing it either early in the morning or late at night the other benefit of that okay is especially if you do it in the morning time you get the sweat out first thing and that can have amazing positive therapeutic effects on you I personally feel so great in the summertime when I wake up early and go get some exercise it doesn't have to be crazy 30 minutes of walking and you'll be totally sweating then you come home take a shower and basically you're ready to do your thing the other thing is when you exercise first thing in the morning you create what's called a calorie deficit and a calorie deficit is very very important to weight loss okay all right now let's turn to a little bit of a different scenario something that's related to summertime and what we're going to turn to now is taking care of your feet and this is one of the most important things that you can do if you're living with diabetes the, one of the most important things to be aware of is if you have diabetes you are more susceptible to cuts on your feet turning into infections and all all of the guidance around diabetes revolves around making sure that you're monitoring the health of your feet so if you're planning on going to the beach for example finding beach shoes that are not open-toed which can be really really hard if especially if you're used to doing flip-flops okay but finding boat shoes for example finding footwear that you can be more proactive about in terms of protecting your feet I cannot stress this enough now the second part of that is checking your feet often because here's the thing a little pebble a little grain of sand can irritate your the skin on your foot okay and what you don't want to have happen is a little tiny cut a little tiny irritation turn into a much 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 bigger problem because you weren't being proactively conscious of your feet so that's really the second very very specific diabetes related thing for the summertime in the summertime be careful with walking around barefoot 
if you are walking around barefoot or if you're going someplace where your feet are going to be exposed, you want to be checking your feet often. You want to be careful. That's really, really the key word, okay? Being careful. Now, when it comes to enjoying yourself, this is the, the, the last part we're going to talk about, okay? So, we talked about staying hydrated. We talked about getting exercise early or late, and but avoiding kind of that midday, that hottest time of the day. And we talked about the importance of taking care of your feet, okay? The last thing that we want to talk about that is specific to diabetes is food activities. So summertime, especially here in the United States, it's a time for getting together. It's a time for late dinners. It's a time for barbecues. It's a time for picnics. And basically, it can be a very, very challenging food management time. And one of the reasons why that is is because barbecue food, as an example, usually is very, very heavy on breads and can be very, very heavy on sneaky carbs. So what's an example of sneaky carbs? An example of sneaky carbs are chips and salsa. Be very, very conscious and careful of things like chips, chips and salsa. Be very, very conscious and careful of the hamburger buns, the hot dog buns, the macaroni salads. Basically, and this is so much easier said than done, it starts with a conscious recognition that if you have diabetes, your body fundamentally has trouble processing carbs. And there are certain types of foods that it just makes sense to stay away from. And I'm not telling you that you need to stay, not eat carbs. I'm just saying I want you to be smart about the carbs that you eat. And I want you to acknowledge and recognize the types of carbs that you have trouble with. So what does that mean? For example, Many people living with diabetes have trouble with grain-based carbs. And I'm going to give you a, a, a personal example because this, what I'm talking about literally just happened to me this past weekend. So I went to the beach with my family. We had a great day, ton of activity. My glucose levels were actually on the lower side partly because of the amount acti of activity we were doing. And we went in and basically just, there was a whole bunch of food that was laid out and everybody was hungry and I was hungry too. And the chips and the salsa really got me. Okay, that was number one. Number two, when we actually had dinner, we had things like hamburgers, hot dogs, macaroni salad. And it was very, very challenging to eat sensibly and it was very very challenging to actually manage the insulin therapy that I have to take in that situation and the bottom line is I woke up the next morning my blood sugar was 250 frustrating very very frustrating now fast forward to the next day same amount of activity right but instead of having hamburgers and hot dogs, we had chicken, salad, and sweet potatoes. And now here was the thing. Sweet potatoes are starches. Sweet potatoes do have carbohydrate. But for me, for me personally, my body responds to carbohydrate from sweet potatoes in a much, much, much better, more manageable way. And I want to encourage you that I want to encourage you to find the carbohydrates that your body works well with, avoid the carbohydrates that your body does not work well with, and then be honest with yourself about those challenging situations where you need to demonstrate portion control. And a great way to achieve portion control in those situations is by basically 
using something like seltzer or using a drink that's not sugary but something that tastes good that's not sugary so a seltzer with lime for example or maybe a uh, if you're making yourself a drink you do half seltzer with something like uh, iced tea and lemonade the point being that you need to demonstrate that ability to have portion control and you need to have alternatives available when everybody else is going hard on sugary foods carb based foods okay and that's really really hard it's really really hard to do and acknowledging how hard that is is the first step in starting to have success with it okay so summertime is one of the best times of the whole year I love the summertime I love being active I love being outdoors I want to encourage you to be active I want to encourage you to be outdoors but I want you to follow and keep these common sense practical tips in mind be wary of dehydration make sure you're drinking enough water okay that's number one understand what the relationship between dehydration and diabetes is that's just fundamentally something that's important for you to understand okay the second thing exercise either in the morning or in the evening and if it's too hot where you are and I want to actually do a shout out to one of our users one of our glucosone members it lives in Texas and shared with us it was hundred and three degrees where they lived that's too hot to be outside exercising is the perfect time to do a glucosone workout or to do any workout indoors okay you want to be smart about that so exercising either in the morning or in the evening but the point being being very careful and conscious of that midday sun the next part taking care of your feet being conscious of your feet cleaning your feet often checking your feet often and when and if you're going to the beach or you're going to a situation where you have your feet are susceptible to cuts or abrasions things like that really really responding to them quickly okay the last one is dealing with food in the summertime two practical common sense doable recommendations number one find carbohydrates that your body does better with acknowledge and avoid carbohydrates that your body does not and then in those social situations when everybody else is is basically going hard with consuming food find things like seltzer or anything else like that that you can enjoy okay and if you do that you're gonna have success Okay, you're going to have success managing your diabetes, you're going to have fun, and you're going to be in a much, much, much better place going forward. All right? And on that, we're going to sign off. There are so Diabetes is such a challenging disease because, number one, it never does the same thing twice. Number two, there are so many different factors that can cause changes to your diabetes okay and number three it requires an emotional fortitude that has to be acknowledged all right and I want to encourage you to reach out to us if you are feeling frustrated if you're feeling like you need some help reach out to us we help anybody anywhere that is literally our motto here at glucosone all right and I want to acknowledge our folks on Instagram right now Bonnie share I see you Bonnie share is a type 1 hero living with type 1 diabetes for 50 plus years it's amazing Bonnie that's what's up I want to acknowledge everybody on YouTube that's joined us guys we have people right now the Sun is just coming up and the sun is just going down. Glucosone is a global community of people that are willing and able to put the hard work in. And it's an honor to be here with you guys tonight. And on that note, we're going to sign off. Have a great night.